Hi, and welcome to another episode of Emerald Isle Vacation Home Specialist. I am your host, Dennis Richkovsky. Some of you recognize me as the co-owner of Flip Flops Donuts, and some of you know me as your broker of real estate, who specializes in waterfront and waterview properties along the Crystal Coast, especially on Bogue Banks and in my town of Emerald Isle, North Carolina. On this channel, you will find essential information from the inside scoops on buying and selling houses to how to live with the ocean rivers and sounds that define the Crystal Coast. Today's episode is all about the WDIR, a document all home buyers must be familiar with. Whether you visit here occasionally or live here full time, getting to know about the WDIR, how it is conducted, and what it means to home buying is a story worth telling. Before I begin, please subscribe to my video channel now or at the end of this episode. Most homes in North Carolina in excess of 10 to 15 years old will have some evidence of wood destroying insects and could well have been damaged by such insects. The function of the WDIR is to report the presence of all visible evidence of wood destroying insect infestation at the time of an, in an inspection. The potential buyer factors the results contained in this report in the decision making process, buy or not to buy. So buyers should understand what exactly a WDIR is and what it is not. The North Carolina official wood destroying insect information report form number WDIR 100 adopted by the structural pest control committee is used for reporting the presence or absence of wood destroying insects and their evidence in structures for sale. To issue this report, an individual must be licensed by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, Structural Pest Control Division, or work for someone who is licensed to perform structural pest control work. It is the only form that is legal for this purpose and is required on almost every residential structure sold. Therefore, it is especially important for that home buyers, lenders, and other interested individuals understand the scope and information and limitations contained in this form. By law, an inspection for wood destroying insects and their evidence is the careful visual examination of all accessible areas of a building and the sounding of accessible structural members adjacent to slab areas in contact with masonry walls and other areas particularly susceptible to attack by wood destroying insects. Evidence includes both present and past activity of wood destroying insects visible in or under a structure or in or on debris under the structure. Permanently attached decks, porches, storage sheds, etc. also are included in these inspections. Outbuildings and other detached structures are not routinely inspected unless specifically requested by the client. In order for the inspection to be completely correct, the pest control operator, or the PCO, must have access to all interior and exterior areas of the structure to be inspected. Paragraph one through four of the conditions governing this report on the reverse side of the form will discuss the extent of the inspection performed and it is here that the PCO must indicate areas of the structure that were inaccessible at the time of the inspection. The WDRIR is issued for informational purposes and is required to reveal information concerning evidence of wood destroying insects only. 
the PCO must report all visible evidence of wood destroying insects and any conditions conducive to subterranean termites. Though sometimes referred to as a clearance letter or a termite letter, it is neither. The WDIR is not a warranty as to the absence of wood destroying insects. It is a report of the visible presence or absence of wood destroying insects at the time of the inspection. As such, it is not a clearance letter in that it does not necessarily clear a structure. And it is not a termite letter. The inspection addresses more than just termites. Insects commonly noted on a WDIR include subterranean termites, powder post beetles, old house borers, carpenter ants, and sometimes carpenter bees. Other less common insects may also be reported. The WDIR also reports on conditions conducive to subterranean termites, such as wood in direct contact with soil, cellulose debris under a structure, excessively wet wood, wood moisture content of greater than 20% in the crawl space, and the presence of wood decay fungi. Other conditions that may be conducive to termites include insufficient clearance between wood members and the soil, excessive moisture in the crawl space, construction flaws, or improper grading. The most important thing to remember is that the WDIR must be, as required by law, a true indication of the presence or absence of evidence of wood-destroying insects. This report should be obtained early in the transaction and be read carefully by all concerned parties. Paying particular attention to the introductory statements on the report and conditions governing the report printed on the reverse. If damage is present, a qualified contractor or engineer should evaluate whether or not structural damage has occurred. Just as an individual is willing to buy a used car with a few dents, so a homeowner, lender, etc. must be willing to accept some wood-destroying insect damage in an older home. Buyers also should know that a so-called clean report is not mandatory in order for a transaction to be complete. But when a PCO finds evidence of wood-destroying insects, such as termite tubes or cast wings, damage or exit holes from wood boring beetles, etc., he must report its presence and specific locations on the WDIR. The report must clearly indicate whether or not the insects have been or are in wooden members. If no evidence of treatment exists in the case of subterranean termites, the PCO may submit a bid to treat the structure. However, this is secondary to the object of the report, which is to report the infestation. The PCO's job is to tell the client that the wood-destroying insect infestation is present. The obligation of the PCO is then fulfilled. It is up to the seller or buyer to contract for treatment if necessary. If a treatment is performed, a copy of the written agreement and warranty, if any, must be attached to the WDIR. Treatment options vary depending on the insect found, the extent of the infestation, whether a previous treatment has been performed, and whether or not a warranty is desired. At the end of the day, just as an individual is willing to buy a used car with a few dents, so too a homeowner, lender, etc. must be willing to accept some wood-destroying insect damage in an older home. To learn more about the WDIR and its impact on the home buying process, subscribe to my newsletter by texting your email address to 919-308-2292 or sign up for my blog on my website, www.eihomesforsale.com. And subscribe to Emerald Isle Vacation Home Specialist 
on YouTube at the end of this video. Stay well and stay safe, my friends. So come on down. Please subscribe to my channel below and definitely return next week to the same bat channel at the same bat time of 9 a.m. on Thursday for yet another episode of Emerald Isle Vacation Home Specialist.